for it. What's up, everybody? Jensen Cummings here. Thank you, as always, for tuning in. I have Danny Oliver. She's the founder of Island to Island Brewery, as well as Beers Giving, excuse me, in the Denver. Man. <laughs> I wish. When Woo! it's not snowing. <laughs> the Dallas Fort Worth area in Texas. No disrespect, Dallas Fort Worth. You are not in Denver. It's a whole different thing. We love it down there as well. We actually had Michael Lauderdale and Randall Broad from Dallas on already. So been connected to that community and I'm excited to be talking to you. Thank you for taking some time for being on the show. Thanks for having me. I really do appreciate it. We are going to have some fun talking about beers giving. So set the table for everybody. Uh, on Saturday, April 4th, this is a big reason we're talking right now. On Saturday, April 4th, you're having the Beers Giving Beer Wage Loss Fund Telethon presented by Danny Oliver. I'm excited to be a part of that. So actually today I'm cutting together a whole bunch of different little clips from the episodes we've had over the last two weeks to kind of tell a story about the humans in hospitality. And that's going to be shared on your show. I'm excited about that because you are raising money for families that are affected by this, which is so many of them. So on Saturday, April 4th, around 10 a.m., still a lot of moving parts, but around 10 a.m. Central Time, go check into the YouTube channels from Beers Giving. We will link that up because there's going to be some good happening. So tell us for you what that is about and just real quickly kind of what people can expect. And then we'll kind of go back and talk about your journey leading up to actually producing this event? Uh, so the beer, Beers Giving uh, originally was about bringing families into the brewery space and helping them to understand that breweries were centers for learning and for social therapy. And that if we enjoy them as a family, we can find more balance in our life. We can bring diversity and inclusion to this industry because a lot of people think that it's for guys only, right? Or that it's for white males with beards and flannel shirts only. And that's just not true. And so I set out on a mission to bust open the doors and welcome people in, uh, but the tides turned and doors have been slammed shut, um, not just to um, diversity and inclusion, but to everybody. And so now we're in a whole different space and the telethon, is not necessarily about welcoming people in, but helping people from the areas that they've been shut out from. Good. Yeah, that that sounds like exactly what we need. And so I want to I want to go back and then get to the point of you doing this because when you said that you were going to be putting this on, when you reached out to me, I had no surprise whatsoever that you were going to be doing this. It's just in your DNA. That's very clear from you know talking a few times and from the episode and by the way danny's got a full episode on the best surf podcast go to bestsurfpodcast.com listen to her episode amazing power a lot of power in that episode you are a strong woman to be sure and we need leadership right now so i was not surprised at all when uh when you said you were doing this event and i want to go back back to the moment where you realized shit is hitting the fan. This is real. It's going to have a major impact on you personally, your family, your community, the craft beer industry, everything and everybody in hospitality as well. That moment you realized it, you took a moment of reflection, I'm sure, and then you went into action. So take us back and then move us forward to making the decision to actually put on this beers giving telethon. Um, wow. Um, <laughs> it's like going back on a roller coaster. <laughs> um, I mean, it's it's that point where you you climb up a roller coaster. You've stood on line for the longest yeah. amount of time, wondering, you know, am I going to get on this ride or not? And you strap in and you're ready. You start climbing and you reach that precipice and you're like, yeah, I'm ready. I can't do anything else. And the roller coaster drops and you realize there's no track. There's, there's no track. That's all I can think of that, that it felt like. And I feel like I was in a position where I had on a parachute and I could immediately pull the cord and watch everyone else drop, understanding that they were dropping, understanding what would happen, 
understanding that there wasn't a net set up, um, understanding that I was outside of it, watching it all and understanding that I even had privilege in the situation. And that's a hard word to use right now, privilege, because are, are any of us privilege in a time where we're losing our incomes, where we're losing the ability to cope? You know, like for me, I immediately felt like I needed to grasp on to something because if I didn't, then I would be falling down with everybody else and I would be in that depression. I would be in that thoughts of suicide spiral. And my words right now to you don't make any sense because it didn't make sense. You want me to go back to that moment? It wasn't reality. It was a TV show gone bad, really bad. It was a zombie apocalypse movie that we've watched a thousand times and prepared us for this, and yet we're still not prepared. What do we do when the world stands still? Um, so I tried to keep working. Honestly, I tried to keep working. I tried to keep on the mission. Um, I planned to still go to Florida and be present um, when I heard that my festival that I was going to be in was canceled, um, I was still going. I was on the phone with businesses. I was all over Facebook, status stalking owners. Hey, how can I help you? I'm going to be in your city. Um, I can't do things the way I plan to, but you know what? People are going to be in your town. Let's support them. Let's fill the void. Let's make sure they have a place to go. Let's make sure that your employees are still getting their, their wages and their tips. Let's, let's do this. And these owners and were with me right up until the week of. They, they were just like, yeah, come on down, come on down. And I, I got on a plane after a 15 minute conversation with my husband because things were just sounding like borders would be closed. So we got yeah. on the plane, we, we literally booked our tickets, drove to the airport, left the car in the airport parking, was on the plane for two hours. Uh -huh. Got our kids, walked back through security, back on the plane. Um, it was like a movie. It, it, it was just like things were happening and you were doing things that you normally plan to do, but you just, you were in autopilot mode. And that was me the last week or so. It's been this autopilot. What can you do as a businesswoman? What can you do to help other people? How can you put yourself on the back burner? Who needs help? What's coming down the pike? You know, everyone's like, oh, apply for unemployment. Well, what about small business owners? What about self-employed? What about 1099? And these are the people that I've been thinking about because I know the government doesn't think about us because we chose to be independent. So mm -hmm. now we are being punished because decisions are being made that go against our First Amendment rights that now put us in a hole where we can't do anything because public opinion has been swayed rights have been given up what do we do yes you uh you need a pulpit you're such a preacher you're such a preacher i love it i absolutely love it and uh it's funny the only difference between the way we approach communicating is i talk so much with my hands and you're very poised which i really like so again no surprise everything that you're saying feeling thinking and then going into action because to that point you had that parachute you had that privilege that you're grappling with at this moment and then you say well look if, if i have a parachute then it's got to be big enough for more people and including the others in that i mean it's not a, it's not a safe ride everybody's going to be affected by this everybody is affected by this but you wanted to help and this was the way that you saw an opportunity to do that through organizing and bringing people together that's just again your default setting so beers giving a telethon i loved when i heard telethon i was like that is so retro <laughs> like what a great way to just combine social media and be live streaming on youtube and then be doing a telethon like ah i just Instantly, I like wanted to produce a commercial for you that was like cheesy telethon with like the guy or the girl walking through the lines of people on phones and they're all happy yes. talking. Like, thank you so much, Johnny, for donating to this cause. Like all of that. Yes. If so, you can, please, please do. Use your kids. Yeah. You can walk through them. You need to find somebody. Like 
it's it just like I, I could see it. I visualized it, and I think that's compelling because with other people, they go, oh, that's clever. You just need people to kind of pay attention right now, and there's so much white noise to just have a moment to pay attention. Here's the thing about what you're doing as well. This can be and should be a wildly huge success. And with everything going on and how stretched thin and so many asks out there, you could only potentially help six people. But if you help six people, that is the biggest victory I could ever imagine. And so it's very just amazing that you're going through this effort. So I really, really appreciate it. So then I, I want to get inside your head because I love the way that your, your mind works when you're thinking about organizing, when you think about creating a brand, creating an experience that's in a different forum. This is not a physical event, which is a lot of what you're used to being able to get in front of people and interact in the high touch hospitality or kind of low nitty gritty, all of it. That's, that's the way that you interact. Now you have to do it from a distance, which is more challenging. You're going to have to use brand and story and voice. Let's get into that because everybody watching, they may not be doing a telethon. They're a small winery in the Finger Lakes of New York, and they are hosting virtual happy hours and wine tastings. You're a small little bakery, lingerie in Southern California who is creating little kits for kids to decorate their own pastries, whatever it is across the country. You need to take the same approach of thinking about how to build out a brand and something that people can interact with. So challenge thrown down, give us your thinking so that other people can utilize that thinking and that ability to execute because that's the challenge. Oh God. Clearly you're facing it right now. Yeah, I'm, I'm you're facing that. You're and facing. Um, I got the notebook open. I, I do have that. I've got, I've got this beautiful notepad here from IREX. And um, this is, excuse me, this is my life right here on postcards and stickies everywhere. Um, how is just writing it all down? The mm -hmm. ideas are coming to me faster than I can process. Um, I don't know how to do anything else. I don't know how to just stop. And every time I stop, a wave of depression comes over me. So I'm just going and I'm paying attention. I'm listening to what people are saying. I'm watching what they're, they're doing. Um, by the grace of the universe, we can still go outside. Um, we can still go to the park. We can still see people in real life. And I'm battling the fact that like what's happening digitally is not what's happening in real life. Like it's, it's two different worlds. Might as well be two different dimensions. Um, and I'm dimension crossing and I don't know if I'm crazy to be honest with you. So we all feel how, a little crazy right now. Yeah. How does anyone develop? How does anyone, the, the biggest word in the entrepreneur community has been pivot. How do you pivot? I have no idea because I spent eight months developing this plan for this campaign for Beers Giving. And um, I don't know how to plan in eight days what took eight months to plan. What I do know is that I have loads of content. I have loads of information, loads of knowledge, and I can try to share it. I know that I'm taking in a lot of information and I think we still have freedom of speech. I think we still have freedom of the press. So I can take in that information and share it back to others who might not be getting that information. Um, it's really hard because there's a lot of clutter. Every time I sit down and think, okay, Danny, you should do a video about this. And it's like, well, why? A thousand people have a video about that and people are already watching it. And their videos are already getting traction. For me to do that now, it wouldn't get traction. It wouldn't be seen. Um, I would be spending all my time working on this thing. And then I have to figure out how to promote it, figure out how to get it to the world. And then this all might end. And then what was that all for when I could have been looking at my kids? Uh, I'm really battling that. I don't know how to tell anyone this is how to move forward. Only thing I know how to do is what comes naturally to me. And it might look like a big old F up, but this is my anti-suicide. This is my anti-depression. And if I can help people in the process, then by God, I hope I can. I really do. 
If I can yeah. stop someone from committing suicide, if I can stop someone in our industry from drinking themselves crazy, like I had to get off of Instagram because my community is drinking like crazy. They're just drinking for fun. They're drinking for breakfast, for lunch. They're drinking to drink with each other. They're drinking alone. They're posting about what they're drinking. And there's no bartender to talk to. There's no bartender to pace them. There's no bartender to cut them off. And that worries me as an owner, as a person who's responsible for the alcohol intoxication levels of other people to see that go on, I, I can't play a part in it. So the only thing I can do wow. is try to get people's attention on something else maybe, even if it fails, just try, say I tried. Interesting, a couple of things that really struck me. One, thinking about that, which I haven't, of you are feel an immense responsibility to create a safe space uh, for people to be able to consume libations because you, you have a brewery, you're creating alcohol, yet you, at the same time, you're very aware and taking responsibility for people's safety and their fun and their joy and their education, all that. So I think that's an interesting thing that for people to think about as potentially, you know, we talk a lot about wineries, hosting happy hours, building community in a small way, but finding a way to be responsible about that because they're not in front of us. Maybe it makes it a little easier to let go of that responsibility that we typically take upon ourselves mo morally and actually legally. So that I want people to listen to that. I also hear you and it really, really resonates with me that this show that I'm doing, I feel like I'm bringing value and telling stories and communicating with the industry and people reach out every day, all day and let me know that. And I'm grateful Yet I know that I am probably personally getting more value out of this because it is so important for me. It's so in my DNA to communicate with people, especially those in the hospitality industry, that this is as selfish as it is altruistic for me to be able to engage with people in that way. And so I need to do this. I'm compelled to do this in the way that you're compelled to do that. And so I think for hospitality professionals, we're compelled to create experience, to serve other people. We serve other people a lot better than we serve ourselves and take care of ourselves and each other often. It's a whole nother topic. With that, find a way, any way to continue to be who you are because the service that you were providing, the food that you were providing was actually only the conduit for actual hospitality, which is the way that you make people feel. Mm. So that's what I really hear when I hear you talking about that. So find whatever your North star is to make people feel the way that you have always made people feel. It just may be in a different medium on a different platform, the scary social media, which scares a lot of people in the hospitality industry. So I love all of that, that you are talking about. What can people expect as far as what is this uh, fun telethon variety show that you're going to be putting on? How do you envision it going down? They're going to hit have 10 minutes of me babbling well i'll keep it to like one minute of me babbling and then some great little sound bites of some of the guests we've had on and there's been some amazing amazing little sound bites and quotes that just like really made my made my skin tingle when people said it so i'm excited to share that what else do you see people being able to take away from this telethon besides the actual charity of it um i see people I, I see podcasters coming on and dedicating their platform, their theme, the way they present their content toward um, the beers given movement of supporting those who might be left behind um, when it comes to financial stimulus and support. Um, I see, I see influencers roasting each other. Like I would, I would love to see like uncap everything and uh, Crown and Hops just roast each other. Um, I would oh, love Eric Jackson would be great at that. He's got the gift to... of Gab for sure. Yes. Um, I would love to see comedians, truth and comedy, come on and story tell about their experiences and then turn around and make fun of it. Just just laugh at themselves. Um Have that we're levity. All crying. So if we can find an opportunity to laugh in our in our tears then I would love that. I, I would love to do, I would love to have between two kegs on the telethon and um, him do a, an episode about, you know, how do we get between two viruses? <laughs> like, I don't know, something stupid. Just 
everybody yes. on there not taking themselves seriously. I would love to see that. I would love to see musicians, you know, take a cover song and and turn it into the next uh, lullaby. You know, there's the ring around the rosy pocket full of posies. I would love to see a musician create the the 2020 version of that song. Um, things that we know are going to be a part of our future moving forward. If we can find a way to joy it up to say, hey, yeah, that happened. But through our wits, through our humor, through our laughter, through our tears, we were able to push each other forward because I really believe that if we have a positive mindset in even the most negative of times that we can pull through. Because if we don't have that mi that positive mindset, then I mean, honestly, what's next? Danny, you know? <laughs> the lullaby. Why are yeah, kids yeah. lullabies so dark? I mean, Ring Around the Rosie was about the plague because yeah. that's literally marks that you got. And then pocket full of posies what people had to reduce the smell. Yeah. yeah. And they would then give out posies. Anyway. Yeah. yeah it's, it's, that's it's, what it is, right? It's, it's dark and stuff. and But there's comedy and levity. And now we, we <laughs> tell it to children to help them sleep at night. Talk about that paradoxical approach there. Why not? Why not this moment to create something that has some levity and then in future generations is a, a conduit for reflection and joy? Uh, I think it's a brilliant way to think about it. It's hard to think about that when you're in it, but artists always find a way, comedians find a way to take dark things and make them funny, sometimes to their own detriment, but that's an important part of their art form. I, I love this. Now, now I'm scribbling down notes because I want to tag some of the people you specifically mentioned or others, because if you are watching you right there, have a comedian friend, have a musician friend or a comedian or a musician or somebody that can take a moment that is complex, that is challenging, that's creating actual opportunity as well for us to connect like we never have before and can put something into this moment of beers giving or any other moment, then I implore you, I challenge you, throw down the gauntlet for you to be able to create something, create, just create yeah. around this. So we're, we're gonna work on this. We're gonna share this. We gotta hold two days to get more people involved. That's plenty of time. Two days in a, in a restaurant or a brewery, that's a lifetime. How many oh, people can oh. serve in that, in that time? So let's get people motivated and activated right yeah, now. Yeah, that's the challenge. I just wanted to say something about that as well. Thank you, one, for the cry for entries. Um, people have been um, asking me all last week, and it, it got me to the point where I was feeling depressed this week. I'm not going to lie. I'm not coming on your show to lie today. I'm not coming to put on a pretty face today. I'm being honest. Um, a lot of people were like, oh, yeah, that's a great idea. What do you want me to do? And I'm just like, what you do best. You know, just do what you do best. I don't want to censor you. I don't want to curate you. I don't want to audit you. I want you to just be you. And I feel like if everyone, I had this belief when I was a little girl that if everyone stopped what they were doing right now and did what they loved, we would all be happy and still find a way to earn a living. And so this is this social experiment. We've all stopped. If you do what you love and turn the camera on, for 10 minutes, don't edit it, don't, don't try to make it perfect, just do what you do, set yourself up, turn the camera on for 10 minutes. Just, just how happy can you be moving forward? How happy can you be if you just did that thing? And in all the hobbies that I have and all my abilities from being a mechanic to a fine oil painter, I don't know if you can see my painting in the background over there, yeah. My little self portrait. Go. Um, from all the talents and skills that I have, the one thing that is not driving me insane is trying to bring people together. It's the only thing I want to do. And if I can spend the next three days bringing people together to take 10 minutes and do what they love and put it on camera, if, if we raise not a single dollar, but we can share joy real joy, joy where you are feeling joy from you doing something. I think we can help more than six people. Yeah, it's a win. The biggest win possible. That Because that pays off in perpetuity. It's forever. It's timeless if people start to take that approach. And I'm with you. 
this is it. This is the reason that we're talking is because I just don't know any other way than to communicate with people. And I was put in a position and challenged to say, you need to communicate with people more and more often and not produce it and literally showing up. And, you know, it's grainy and the, the sound quality is going in and out. And, uh, you know, people are getting dropped from the feed and coming back on. And you know what? That's par for the course. And that's what it's going to take to just communicate. So I am with you all the way. What do you got there? What does that say? Guilty. 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 I'm putting that right by my name right here. Guilty. That's it. <laughs> Danielle, we're <it>. guilty. <laughs> I, I am, people are thanking me and I'm like, what are you thanking me for? I'm thanking you for taking one second out of all of this madness to watch anything that I have to say or anything that I think is interesting or important or the people that I want to surround myself with. One second it's a million bucks to me. And so I have a, a mantra right now. It's I have no idea what I'm doing and I'm going to keep doing it. As long as it brings value to one human in hospitality, win. Biggest accomplishment of my life and career. So I'm excited about that opportunity and being the kind of person I am taking responsibility for that. And so I'm hustling and active out there to try and get people an opportunity to laugh, to learn, whatever it is. A moment of levity is everything, maybe always, but it seems like it's really important right now. So I love it. Let's give people the information again. Saturday, April 4th, four, four, around 10 a.m. It's a moving target a little bit. YouTube channel of Beers Giving. We're going to link that up again. You can check out the Beers Giving Beer Wage Loss Fund Telethon presented by Danny Oliver. You get a little bit more of me on there. I'm excited about that opportunity. Grateful to you to re for reaching out. And people are going to be supported both by the fact that they, once again, get to create and be who they are. And that's a platform you're creating, as well as sharing stories and raising some funds so that we can support people financially in these challenging times. Danny, I appreciate all that. Any last thoughts on that? And then I want a couple playlist items from you. Uh, I think I said all there is to be said. <laughs> yeah, there's a couple of mic drops in there. A couple. It was good. It was um, good. I, I'm really just looking to one, create joy so that we don't have people going deep into depression. Um, and two, I am looking to raise a little bit of funds so that we can support uh, the families who are suffering, you know, unemployment stimulus thing, majig that they're talking about. They say it's not going to come until April 17th. Well, in the hospitality industry, one week without your tips, forget the wages. One week without your tips is groceries. That's it. Is groceries. It's the next week is your cell phone. And when you lose access and connectivity, when you lose your food source. Yeah. I just. Yeah, you're compelled. I understand completely. It's. Uh, it's something that we all need to take responsibility for each other. I've been talking about a lot where even this, this isn't charity. Maybe it, it's, it seems and feels like charity. This is the hospitality being paid back to so many individuals and their families who have given and given and given been in that mode for the entirety of their lives and careers quite often. And so that's the way that I look at it because on the flip side, we as hospitality professionals, we're proud. We're, we have a tough guy, tough gal mentality a lot. We're not willing to ask for help. We got it. We are never too weeded in, in all of those dogmatic parts of our industry are getting, getting stripped down a little bit, sometimes to the detriment, but other times we're allowing ourselves to be more open than maybe we ever have before. And that in that I see the opportunity and that's what you're really trying to catalyze right now. So I appreciate that. All right. What's, is on your playlist right now. What are a couple of things that you are listening to, watching, reading, interacting with that's giving you some moments of levity, something that people can use to decompress? Give us some recommendations. Um, I don't know if it'll help anyone decompress, but um, I, I read and watched 1984, uh, 451. Oh, you're going what, down the rabbit hole even further, huh? Well, hey, it hey. helped me because yeah. it helped me to understand that, like, what has been planned and what 
this thing being presented to us is and why even even in 1984 when he was eating chocolate like something just came out i don't know if it's true or not but it's talking about theo brown theo bromine and that helping um our bodies in this time and so just 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 looking at what those stories are about and juxtaposing what's happening today it's it's less for me about going crazy and more of understanding okay people have talked about certain things things have been presented to us we've been conditioned for these things now if we have awareness we cannot go down the rabbit hole we cannot go down that road that we're being led down because we have foresight so for me it's about developing that foresight what has been planned what has been thrown out there what has been left on the table in truth for us to pay attention to that many have not paid attention to and so 1984 451 shadows of liberty unfair uh drunk history i just had to get a bottle of wine last night and binge drunk his drunk history just because it, it's helping me to understand that struggle is the human condition. It's not new. We've been here before. Dealing with plagues and outbreaks is not new. It is the human condition. How do we get over it, past it? How do we stand up? How can we be a leader? Like a lot of times people ask me, who do you read and who do you find inspiration from? No one. So how can I stand up and be inspiration for someone who can't find it just like I can't? And so I'm arming myself with history, with insight, with storytelling, with ideas that people have had about what could possibly happen if we don't pay attention to the things that are important, like our rights. And I will say this, and hopefully the cops don't come for me and label me as a domestic terrorist, but I will keep saying this, that as Americans, we have that First Amendment. Everyone, please go and read your First Amendment. You want a playlist, Jensen? The Constitution. Oh, that's my opinion. That's heavy. I like that you're staying in a mode of challenging yourself and being on the front foot. I think that's super important. Whatever that is for anybody else, I think is the thing I'm taking away from what you're saying throughout all of this is like you have to stay you and you are intense. You are there to like make shit happen. You are going to find every thread of information and put it into this brain of yours and turn it into action. So I really, really appreciate that you're staying you in these moments. And then you have the oil painting and your kid who I hear screaming. So let's get you back to your kid. He's probably not watching 1984 yet, but, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and, I, I think it's great. It's a it's a true inspiration and it's just real. You know, like this is just you doing you. And if it comes across as leadership or it comes across as just grinding or it comes across as you being selfish to keep your own depression at bay, those are all okay. And that's the thing. Everybody needs to know it's okay to not be okay. It's not okay to not be yourself right now and continue to push forward as a part of a hu of humanity because we talk about humans and hospitality a lot. So Danny, I truly appreciate you being on the show today. Appreciate you being on the podcast. Again, go check out Danny Oliver's episode on the Best Serve podcast. And I'm excited to be just a little part of the Beers Giving Telethon on Saturday, April 4th. Danny Oliver, thank you so much. Thank you. All right, be good, be safe. Go play with that kid. That's the moment of levity we us parents all need. Cheers. Yes, cheers. Yes. Now you can see why I wanted to have Danny on the show. She is a lightning rod. I was seriously a preacher at heart, the way that she just delivers and ebbs and flows from being strong and intense to reflective and emotional. And it's all real in a challenge I can see in her face of how she is trying to navigate right now, I'm trying to find a moment of leadership for herself, her community, her grander community of food and beverage, craft beer, hospitality. So I'm excited to be able to support that even just a little bit. So check out the Beers Giving YouTube page, throw the link down below in the comments so you guys can link onto that. And you'll see me and some of my guests over the last two weeks on this, the live shows of Best Served Podcast. 
in the time of coronavirus madness for us to be able to have those moments of communication because they mean everything to me. And I was not just saying it when I say that this is truly moments of gratitude that I have to be able to communicate in this way that a single person would spend any time out of their fucking lives right now with everything they have going on to listen to this show is truly humbling and I'm honored and I'm continue to do it because it feels good to me and I hope it brings just a small amount of value to you. Dane's got, Dane's got me fired up. I'm going to go attack this day now because a lot of times she mentioned it. I wake up, my energy is not where it needs to be. It's not where it usually is because I don't know what the day is going to bring. And the second I think about the guest that I'm going to have on this show, I'm fired up, fired up. Tomorrow's episode, I am going international for the first time. Let's hope that the technology withstands all of the sucking of bandwidth of everyone being on the interwebs. Well, we are going international. I'm going to have Drew Deckman, an amazing chef, great guy from Deckman's and El Magor in Valle de Guadalupe in Baja, Mexico. We are going to talk to him, see what's going on south of the border, see what's happening with him and his family. He's a true leader in the industry, so I'm excited to see the perspectives that he has. He's going to keep it real, I know, and have some words of wisdom. So tune in tomorrow. Thank you, as always. I appreciate you, and have a great day. Have a sip or a bite of something delicious today you deserve.